And our final speaker is, is, speaker is uh, Taj Harge, who's the director, founder of the Muslim Educational Center at Oxford. And he will be speaking on banning the burqa, religious intolerance, or secular imperative. So, so Taj, over to you. But someone made the outlandish claim that there's no such thing as a moderate Muslim. Well, you're looking at one. Yes. <laughs> I'm invited by the conference organizers to talk about the burqa or the niqab. Is it a religious intolerant to ban it, or is it a secular imperative to do so? So I'll speak on this topic as an observant Muslim, a real Muslim, Islamic theologian and historian. Now there's a famous Nazi dictum allegedly made by Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister, that the bigger the lie and the more you repeat it, the more the people believe. This encapsulates in a, in a nutshell the traditional Muslim position that female facial masking is intrinsic to Islam. They've been conditioned to believe it is. But on the basis of academic research and scholarship, I support the banning of all page, public facial masking in the UK, like France and like in Belgium. But first, let's be clear about terminology. We should not use the word veil indiscriminately. In my perspective, the hijab, the headscarf, or the jilbab, the outer garment is not a veil. The veil is something that conceals the face, like the niqab or the burqa. There's no problem with the hijab or the jilbab or the shadow because they do not obscure identity. Linguistic precision is important so as not to confuse the issue. The niqab and burqa should therefore not be dignified by calling it a face veil, when in effect it is a face mask, a ninja. Now this, this principle opposition, this principle opposition to the niqab and burqa is premised on six compelling reasons. I'm gonna go very quick, quickly, so forgive me. Firstly, it's on theological grounds. Many British people have been conned by Muslims and, and, and believe the, the, the card that the Muslims are playing, the religion card. They've been told by Muslims that it is a theological requirement for, for women to hide their faces in public. This is patent nonsense. There's no scriptural basis whatsoever for this holy pre-Islamic tradition that first originated in ancient Persia 2,000 years before Islam and then spread to Byzantium with aristocratic men shielding their women folk from the gaze of the peasantry. Later on, patriarchal Muslim society embraced the chauvinistic custom and invented convenient religious justification from non-divine and questionable sources like the suspects are here, the contentious hadith, and foolish fatwas that have no legitimacy at all in the Holy Quran. There's a world of difference. Let me explain this. And let me emphasize it. There's a world of difference between Orthodox Islam and original Islam, between popular Islam and pristine Islam. It's like night and day. Some of you may not know that facial masking is banned in Mecca and that women are not allowed to perform their daily prayers with their faces covered. So if face, fa facial concealment is prohibited at the holiest mosque in Islam, why is it necessary for women to don this antiquated custom here in the UK? <coughs> now what is clear is that there is no religious sanction for face masking in the transcendent text of Islam. Neither the word burqa or niqab is found in the Quran that says it is complete, detailed, and a clear text. The scripture also confirms that the creator does not run, make any errors or runs out of words or forgets. And that and, and that we should not believe what duplicit mullahs and misog misogynistic clerics uh, uh, invent and manufacture the rules about uh, this type of uh, garment. And neither can Muslims rely on the repeated saying of the Prophet Muhammad that were only recorded 300 years after his, his death. They invariably were fra fabricated and fixed to suit ideological purposes or sectarian agendas. Now since the burqa niqab is pre-Islamic, it is non-Quranic, ipso facto it is un-Muslim. And for this reason alone, Muslims should not be conditioned or brainwashed by the male clergy who claim it is incumbent or even recommended for Muslim women to mask their faces in public. The criteria for Quranic modesty makes it plain that only the private parts in the bosom of women, not the face or the hair, should be covered. It's a deliberate distortion by rabid masculine interpreters to program and brainwash ill-informed women to think that facial concealment enhances their spirituality or religiosity. All the literature that dupes women to conceal their faces are written by sexes men who are determined to keep Muslim women in a servile role in Islamic society. It's highly instructive that none of the texts of vindication of face masking has been written by women. Far too often women sadly tend to, to be unthinking embraces of a highly questionable ideology and a totally warped theology. Now even the hijab, the, the hair covering, had been elevated into Islamic rule when it's nothing but an old Jewish custom and Christian habit. You'll find reference to this in Leviticus in the Old Testament and Corinthians in, in the New. As an aside, the word hijab does occur eight times in the Quran, but its original meaning has been hijacked by the all masculine clergy. It really means curtain, screen, barrier, partition, and does not refer at all to women's hair. That's, that's theological reason. Second reason to ban this thing. 
uh, it's political. The imposition in Britain of a backward Saudi and putrid Gulf version of tribal Islam is not in conformity with the sacred scripture of my faith. There is a battle going on for the hearts and minds of British Muslims, and we do not want a distorted and toxic Saudi variant of the faith becoming dominant in the UK. Their twisted and poisonous doctrines routinely discriminates against women and non-Muslims, and is completely incompatible with UK life. Open-minded and integrated Muslims want to see the emergence of a British Islam, not a MI5, MI6 Islam, a British Islam that is rooted in and relevant to 21st century British society, not a perverted caricature of Saudi tribalism and Wahhabi zealotry. The third uh, reason to, to, to ban this thing, legal inequality. In the supposedly gender equal society of ours, where men and women have identical rights, why should females conceal their faces in public and remain anonymous while men will be subject to arrest when doing so? Either both genders should have equal rights. Either both genders should have equal rights to, com to complete public anonymity or no one can. Either everyone can hide their faces in public or no one should be permitted to do so. Anything less is indefensible in this liberal democracy of ours. The human, the human rights argument that niqabi purveyors and practitioners use to justify face masking does not pass muster either. Firstly, it is not, like I said, a matter of religious freedom. It is a cultural convention and a tribal habit devoid of any Quranic authenticity. Secondly, there is no inherent human right for anyone to mask their identity in public. Once any person enters the public sphere, everyone is entitled to know who they are. Number four, social implications. This obsolete tribal garb only aggravates sexual apartheid and social barriers. It is not conducive to effective integration or community cohesion. No wonder that 70% or so of the British public today want to outlaw all forms of public face masking. And as long as the mullah, as long as Muslims remain on the margins of society, they cannot be part of the mainstream. Facial masking exacerbates the them and us dichotomy and projects a nasty Neanderthal manifestation of Islam propagated by the reactionary and repressive Saudis and their, uh, and their paymasters. Number five, security risk. I want to speak much about that. Everyone knows that uh, covering the face in this, this day and age is a huge security risk. I'll leave that there because it leads to ter terrorism and other cr criminal activity. Number six, some of you may not be aware. Medical research shows uh, there's a disturbing link between full body concealment and vitamin D deficiency. So there's a health reason for this. Even in, even in extremely hot Muslim countries, this has serious health implications for masked women, especially in Britain, given our notorious gray weather. You know, these women, these masked women, give birth to disease-ridden children and damages their own health as well. And not only is this a self-inflicted injury, but it also taxes our uh, National Health Service uh, that you and I finance. And just as smoking, and just as smoking has now been banned in public buildings, we must embark on a similar legislative program against facial masking on all public buildings and, facil as fac and facilities as a prelude to its total prohibition. The niqab there was a tribal contraption and not a holy cloth. It's an archaic patriarchal custom, a cultural rag that has found a new lease of life because of Saudi petrodollars and, and the Wahhabi control of holy places in, in Arabia where they indoctrinated millions of unsuspecting Muslims into embracing Arab imperialism and Saudi traditions. Face masking is a fashionable, fashionable trend today, a modern fad by young Muslim women whose own mothers and grandmothers never wore this idiot garment, garment. So do the trendy wearers of the face mask think that the uncovered mothers and grandmothers were not good or devout Muslims? And Muslim woman claims the divine is the human right and personal choice to wear this uh, tribal contraption. But this makes a, makes a total, total mockery of the human rights charter that guarantees religious freedom. However they wish to spin it, like Alistair uh, Campbell, however they wish to spin it, face masking is not a religious but purely a political statement. It's an ideological fad that has nothing to do with Islam. It's a bizarre cultural monstrosity, not the recognized doctrine of the faith. Yet the champions of Muslim face masking just honestly claim that it is a religious mandate for them to do so. But they should know that creed and culture are not the same, that religion and tradition are not identical. Face masking is not the equivalent of sporting a crucifix, donning a skull cap, or wearing a turban, as none of those symbols obscures a person's identity. Many Muslims think that civic rules and public sentiments do not apply to them and demand exceptionalism. Too many of us, you lot there, have unfortunately succumbed to this disingenuous Saudi propaganda that asserts that face masking is an Islamic uh, uh, concept. 
The proponent of facial masking tries to exploit Voltaire's famous defense of free speech and argues that everyone has the liberty to wear what they choose. While, while Voltaire's freedom of expression is critical, it applies to speech, not to face masking. And not all tribal fans or personal choices embody free expression. This habit is not PC, nor is it the right thing to do for an open society to encourage or to endorse. Why do we condone this deliberate import that degrades and dehumanizes women? Let me respectfully remind you that in burqa, niqab, and all... Uh, and all face masking is pre-Islamic, non-Quranic, un-Muslim, and anti-social, and importantly, it is un-British. And for incontrovertible theological, political, legal, social, security, and health reasons, I urge you all to support our campaign to ban the, the burqa and the niqab in the UK, to ban, uh, for, 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 for incontrovertible theological, political, legal, social, security, and health reasons, I urge you all to support our campaign to ban the burqa and niqab in the UK and to make this crash import a relic of the primitive past and send this awful tribal garb back to where it came from. This is not religious intolerance, but rather a major secular imperative. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Taj, for that... Uh powerful uh, pre present pre presentation.